a referee there, you know, unfortunately. So, oh, well, who makes you the referee? I think the Americans did a pretty good job without the people criticizing them in Germany and Japan. And I think the Germans and Japan and Japanese would be the first people to admit it. I think the Americans are doing and have done a good job in Yugoslavia and Kosovo and Bosnia. You know, Americans aren't perfect, but they, are, they, they try to do something decent occasionally. And uh, if they had done something in Africa, maybe a lot of slaughter there wouldn't have gone on. They probably shouldn't have run away from Mogadishu and places like that. Maybe they should be in the Sudan stopping that, stopping that, you know, uh, massacring and raping and every other horrendous thing, burning people in fires, you know, little children throwing them in bonfires. I mean, it's just disgusting. I just read an article in the paper today about you can rape any woman as long as she's dark. I mean, that's how they, that's how they determine, well, well, you're dark, I can rape you. Uh, and, you know, you need a referee. You, you should protect the weak. Defiance of the strong, protection of the weak, wasn't that what Marua was all about? We studied in the, uh, in, in the beginning of the class. I think you need to protect the people who are being uh, brutalized and threatened. And maybe you shouldn't brutalize them. You shouldn't have Abu Ghraib and stuff. Anyway, this is the situation we face in, in Islamic law today. So, here's how the schools run. The Maliki school went from Medina, spread across North Africa with the Muslim armies, got to Spain, got to Morocco, and basically every Arab country or area in North Africa and West Africa, including Mali and uh, Nigeria, are all Maliki. They went with the Muslim armies across North Africa. Iraq and eastwards became Hanafi. That's why I know that he's a Hanafi even though he doesn't know it. Uh, because the Turks, particularly out in Western, Central, and Central, Eastern, out in Central Asia, were converted from Iraq into Hanafi school of Is Islamic law. And when they came back in in the Seljuk period and the Ottoman period, they brought the Hanafi right back in with them. So you got a kind of thing that the Ottoman Empire was Hanafi, and the Mughal Empire too in India would be Hanafi. Uh, but um, in India was uh, created a kind of Anglo-Muhammadan law too, but it was uh, based on the Hanafi school. There was no, they didn't know anything about Shafis, Malikis, Hanbalis in India at all. Uh, only Hanafis out uh, that way. But in Iraq proper, Shafism uh, made inroads, and in Egypt. Uh, so it turns out that the upper class tends to be Hanafi, but the masses tend to be Shafi in Iraq. I'm talking about Sunni areas. In, in, in Iraq, Syria, Jordan, Palestine, Egypt, those places tend to be a mix, but mostly the, uh, the average person is Shafi. The, it's, uh, the Ottoman upper class is uh, Hanafi. And then finally, Hanbalis. They retreated as the most conservative group into what we now call Saudi Arabia, the Arabian Peninsula proper. The Arabian Peninsula is Hanbali, the most conservative group, but even Hanbali with a, with a vengeance, since they've gone even further, a Hanbali jurist called Abdul Ibn Wahhab of more recent times gives you a Wahhabi version of Hanbali. And now we speak about the Saudis as being Wahhabis. That's just the name of the jurist, Abdul ibn Wahhab. Uh, but they're uh, originally Hanbalis and uh, more extreme even than that, Wahhabis. But um, what's the difference between the four schools? Well, the most liberal of the four schools are the Hanafis. This is really their basic structure here. They recognize all these things, including Kisans. Where the differences come is how much kisas or raw individual opinion are you going to allow? Um, the Malikis, less. The Shafis say, none at all, only these three things, Quran, Hadith, Ijma. And the Hanbali say, no Ijma, just these, Quran and Hadith. Those are the roots, and they grow more and more conservative as we go down the line. So the Hanbalis are the most conservative. Everything has to be based on Koran and, uh, and uh, Sunnah. Shafis, 
sunnah, yes, ijma, yes, but only a sunnah of the prophet. Only a sunnah that goes back to the prophet. Can't be a sunnah that goes back to Khalid uh, ibn al Walid or uh, or uh, something. It has to be. And so you see, what Shaf and the others say. Once Shafi did that, said he would only accept a sunnah of the prophet. Everyone sort of the manufacture sunnahs in the name of the prophet, because that's the only thing that they would. You know, once he raised the prophet was had to be the prophet. Then, of course, all the, anyone writing a legal tradition after that would put it in the name of the prophet. And that's why this is a very complex uh, study. You see how complex it is, and it's not sufficient to look at the isnads. Because the most unreliable ones would probably have the best isnads. That doesn't mean there aren't some reliable ones with an isnad, decent isnad. But once the prophet became raised, then all the new ones after that were put in the name of the prophet. What about the old ones that hadn't been put in the name of the prophet? Take a vast study. I'm not going to do it, frankly, because I just, frankly, it's too much for me. But the Muslims want to take it. Don't undertake it with the proper objectivity that we're speaking about usually. So I'm not sure they can undertake it either. Uh, actually, a Western scholar, maybe a Western Muslim scholar, would have to uh, look into this go beyond where Schacht and these others went, but it's a vast un un undertaking to do. But I must say, Schacht, if you think I'm nuts, Schacht taught me everything I know about uh, how to do tradition research, which helped me with the Gospels. I just applied it to the Gospels, because uh, it was a, a really a powerful tool that he showed me how to exercise such uh, consideration of things. Well, that's all I have to say about Islamic law. Have I confused you guys thoroughly? It's quite a subject. It's a really amazing subject. Anyway, when all said and done, Islamic law then is known as Sharia. The final version of all this comes to be known as Sharia, which means street way. If you're in an Arab Islamic city, you go down the street and it'll say uh, Sharia uh, Ibn Aldoun, Ibn Aldoun Street, Sharia Robert Eisenman, Robert Eisenman Street. Uh, no, there's nothing after that for me, don't worry about that. Sharia, uh, Sharia Yasser Arafat, you know, Yasser Arafat Street, and so on. Sharia uh, Saddam Hussein, Saddam Insane Street. And so on and so forth. So actually, nowadays, it's just